What's up everybody, Steven C. Killer here. It's time for a new reaction video. But before that, 77% of you guys watching are not subscribed. Now there are two reasons for this. You're either new or returning. With today's video, I hope you change that. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and join the Discord so you don't miss out on any live streams or new videos. With this being a brand new year, we have a brand new goal, by the way. Instead of 200k, we're going for 250,000 subscribers. Now, let's get into this video. Welcome back to some more back rooms. Now, we have a new video that just dropped, and it's been a good bit since the last one. This one is called Damage Control. So, if you do not know what happened last time, uh, one of the people that disappeared that was working for the corporation, well, since he disappeared... He was basically, his death was forged by the company, and when he finds out about it, he kind of goes a little bit of crazy, escapes or something, and then there's a team that goes into the back rooms, they get jumped, and uh, he gets the shotgun and somebody gets shot. That's exactly what happened in the last video we watched the back rooms. This one is called Damage Control. Now, even though it's called Damage Control, this could be something completely different. I don't know yet. But these are never really uploaded in the order of like the following. So this could be something completely different. But that was what the last video of the back uh, rooms were by this channel, uh, Kane Pixels. So if you guys aren't aware, check out all the other reactions, all that stuff. And I want to say one thing. Just the other day, guys, we finally hit it. 200,000 subscribers and, and we did it during while streaming the most recent game that re released that I'm enjoying right now Dead Space Remake and I'm absolutely loving it and we hit it on that stream thank you so much everybody for hitting that subscribe button it really does make a difference for me and um, with hitting that I made an announcement and I'll be advertising this a little bit before the actual day happens. But sometime soon, I'll be announcing the day of when it starts. But I will be doing what is known as a subathon, but on YouTube, which is actually more called a memberthon. So just like on Twitch, when you give a sub or become a subscriber on Twitch, it adds time to the stream. And I'll be doing the same thing on YouTube. But instead of subscribers, of course, because subscribers are the free thing, I'll be doing the member memberthon. So if you want to become a member, hold off until I do that memberthon because you can make me stream longer. And uh, just in general, guys, if you want to know when I go live or when it starts, be very, very patient. Check out my YouTube community page. Be part of the Discord. Do all that good stuff and uh, look out for it soon. But anyways, let's get into this video and check out what the is damage control. Mark, this is Team A. Do you read us? Hey, Team, this is Mark. I read you. What is it? We need immediate arms support of room 14C. My team now being held at gunpoint by a hostile. I repeat, please send immediate arms support to room 14C. Oh, wait. That was the... That was, uh... That was when uh, he had the shotgun. So this, he said, "I'm being, we're being held by gunpoint." I think this is literally taking place after that. Then. Oh, is this supposed to be like at the same time point, but a different team hears it? I'll say it once, I'll say it again. If a man points a gun at you and tells you to shut the fuck up, don't, don't, I'm sorry, but if he, sh he should have not done anything. He, he died knowing that he was doing something stupid. And being shot square in the chest by a shotgun, most people do not survive that. Oh! That might be him. The one that shot. <gasps> yep, 
That's him. He's got the shotgun. I don't think he's making out of this alive. They're not going to let him get out. Shit like this never works out because there's so so many higher ups that have money to silence. Well, he's out of the back rooms, but he may be out. But he's got to get out of the facility without the guards or anything. Even though he killed someone, I kind of, I kind, I kind, I kind of feel bad for this guy. I kind of rooted for him to get out. forgot to say this because of my announcement but link in the description show your support to Kane pixels just in case like and subscribe that that method of conducting ourselves was not viable so I'm coming to you now to correct this mistake and begin delivering the authentic order of events as we understand them on the morning of March 1st a team of four researchers was sent into the complex oh, okay so they're gonna go through the step by step of what happened George okay cool Marvin Lee Ronald McCarthy and Peter Tench. At around 12.25 p.m., the group realized that they had lost track of Tench while traversing a previously accessed branch of hallways. As you will recall, this prompted an immediate withdrawal of response back to standard, followed by several days of significant search efforts. However, uh, those ultimately yielded nothing, and as far as any of us were concerned, Tench had simply vanished, leaving no physical trace. Yeah. Now, for obvious reasons, that wasn't something that we could disclose to the public. So, roughly two weeks following his disappearance, our security team was forced to put together a more acceptable cause of death that would keep attention away from this institute and provide closure to the family. They fucking faked his goddamn death, and then hell, and then made sure the family knew about it so they could hold a. Ceremony for his funeral, which is fucked up. So, that is all close to common knowledge, I presume. Not all of you were with us at the time of the incident. However, you're certainly aware of the effects it has had on our internal procedures over the past few months. Regardless, that was where Tensha's involvement in this came to an end. Or, at least, that's what we assumed. Because on May 8th, at approximately 5.30 p.m., a motion alert was sent out from the complex, which was closed off at the time. One of our senior engineers was sent down to assess the situation and discovered a male dressed in hazard gear who we were able to identify as Peter Tench. Immediately following this discovery, Tench was moved to a secure room on this floor where... Okay, so we're getting some... 
answers of two things. One, what did they do? And t two, how probably, hopefully, what we, we, we can find out is how he escaped and made it back into the back rooms. Because he, he doesn't have his hazard suit anymore. So they probably brought him in, questioned him where he's been. He's probably told them that I, I've... He, he did a time skip somehow with his himself or something. That's what a lot of people are speculating, and especially during the the uh, film theory videos I've been watching of the back rooms, which I'm looking forward to the next one now that we have this. Oh, you know what? Actually, let me check the description. Is there... There might be a hidden video in here. I don't know if this is a hidden video. This might be. We might click on these to see what the hell they are. A select group of doctors were able to administer a panel of tests in order to determine what had happened to Peter in the two months he had been gone. Uh, those tests yielded very little useful information. Uh, by all measures, Peter appeared to be in excellent health. However, we were still provided one very useful tool in understanding uh, how the situation unfolded from his perspective. Some of you may recall that on the day of his disappearance, Tench was his team's designated camera operator. Well, when we recovered him, he still had that camera in his possession, and in fact had documented the entire ordeal. Uh, the footage will be presented in its entirety later today. However, for the purpose of this discussion, I will only be highlighting key events. Oh, so they got... He did have the camera. Okay, okay, so maybe we get a little bit more than what we saw when... He got separated because I think that really just the moment he got separated is when that video kind of ended. So we get a little bit of aftermath of what happens the afterwards. It's been a while. I could be wrong about that. This is the hallway where Peter was last seen. They're not in view, but you can hear the others walking behind him. Now, as he approaches the branch on the right here, pay close attention to the audio. Guys, can you hear this? That's right. Oh, this is getting cool. Following that abrupt flash you just saw, Tench proceeds back out to the hallway in search of his team, but it is without any indication of the presence. The next 30 or so minutes of the tape uh, follow a fairly panicked Tench as he attempts to navigate his way back to the threshold. He does obviously find his way back. However, the threshold appears not as he knows it, but as it appeared on the date of May 8th. This ties us back to the moment when we recovered him. So, uh, to summarize, from his point of view, he had only been inside the complex. Maybe that was part of the video, because I, I, I guess that could have... Yeah, I guess that was part of the video, is when he uh, set off the alarm is probably where it, where it ended. I just been a, It's just been a while. Several hours. Uh, so to him, all of the new developments surrounding the threshold were completely foreign. Luckily, though, as I already mentioned, there were people available to manage the situation as it unfolded. And over the course of the following days, we were able, we, able to uh, properly sit down with Peter and work with him to gain a collective understanding of what had happened. However, there was still the very significant fact that Mr. Tench was considered legally deceased as a result of the cover story. Yeah, being fi finding out you're legally deceased is going to fuck with anybody. And reversing that would be no easy feat. He understood this and was willing to cooperate while he looked for a way to reintegrate him without raising suspicion. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, that process ended up taking quite a bit longer than we had anticipated. And all the while, Peter was sucked out here, waiting arguably by. We did our best to keep him engaged, but it is hard to combat the effects of prolonged sensory deprivation on the human brain. And as a result, uh, Peter's mental state took a toll. Not to a degree that was outright concerning at first, but around the end of week two, 
we noticed that he was starting to exhibit a number of behaviors common in patients diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Though we don't have reason to believe that Mr. Tench was afflicted with that condition. Whatever the case, while he didn't express it outright, from what we could gather, he appeared to have deluded himself into believing that he was still inside some sort of illusion created by the complex, and that we were secretly looking to do him harm. This all came to a head on the night of the 22nd, when while Tench was finally about to be transferred to a temporary above ground residence, he broke away from us and, using stolen credentials, forced his way back into the complex where he would go undiscovered until just last night, when he ambushed and violently attacked Team B in room 14C, leaving Dr. Bloom in critical condition. That motherfucker dead! We can presume that during the two or so days Tem spent in the complex, he met door with the idea that he could somehow escape through an alternate threshold, but still held on to the belief that all of us here were working to trap him in some way, despite our actions saying exactly the opposite. Immediately after firing a single shot from the Remington 870 to Dr. Bloom's side, Tench fled the scene and headed to the threshold outpost, where he would turn the weapon on several more of you while progressing into standard and through the lower offices. Given the abrupt and chaotic nature of the unfolding situation, it took our security team several moments longer than he ideally should have to figure out what was happening. But thankfully, while Tench was passing through one of the empty labs next to storage, Dr. Maxwell was able to act quickly. And they still... Besides, like, the random people, they personally still haven't, like, had any interactions or any attacks with the, the fucking mold. And, of course, that glowing green light. We still need more information about that. And they still have nothing. They have still no full-length knowledge of the dangers that they are tampering with. And managed to disarm him, accidentally discharging the weapon into the ceiling in the process, though. However, Tench still managed to avoid apprehension, fleeing into the maintenance wing, and evading our security staff by taking the freight elevator to the surface. Now, this situation could have played out very badly, given the potential number of witnesses around the building at the time. But, luckily for everyone involved, as far as we can tell, Tench was not noticed as he exited the property. Around five minutes later, our security team made it to the ground floor and began a thorough sweep in the direction of the hillside where cameras had last observed Tench. So he's, he's free, but everyone who does know him or would believe... Well, well of course, if they saw him, they'd believe he's alive, but it, it's going to be a shock and everything, and, and they don't want the world to be knowing exactly what they're up to and this is definitely going to be something where i feel like they've they sent a squad out to um silence him now there's no easy way to say this other than to just say it i am terribly sorry to inform you all but mr tench was found deceased halfway down the hillside the result of an extreme blow to the head. Yep. They fucking murdered him. It appears that while he was running through some brush, he failed to anticipate a sudden dip in the ground. And... Excuses! Lie! I don't trust this. ...tragically fell forward into a large rock. Given the circumstances, it was not something any of us could have anticipated or prevented. The tragedy of the entire situation undoubtedly remains. But you found him, and Dr. you took him out. Regardless of how troubled he was in his final days, was a really man who gave his all to this project. He would certainly not want us hindering it in his name. What we're doing here is so much bigger than any one person. It is the work of a unified effort, and we need to ensure that that is never lost sight of. That we hold on to the pre-established notion that Peter is. I guess in the in a sense, if someone went missing, they know now that 
a person if they got went missing might show up roughly two or longer months later because they got teleported into the future. And has been deceased. That is done. And there is nothing more to be extracted. Hold up. Or those images. It's probably him. Maybe he's still alive, actually. Ooh, and they lied again! Oh, okay then. All right. Well, uh, before we move on or end this, let's check out these links. See if they. Nope. Just the that page. Just in case. I have no idea what that is. All right. Well, looks like there's no hidden uh, hidden link or anything like that. May 26, 1990 is the time frame that this is supposed to be. Okay, interesting. Anyways, if you guys have any theories or ideas or anything else you may have taken from this that I may have missed, comment down below, let me know, and uh, join the Discord, hit the notification bell, subscribe, all that good fuck shit, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, later! This is the Prince of the Motherfucking Saiyans, and I am ordering you to subscribe to Steven Z. Keller!